Welcome to Virtualize Everything. We've been talking about this in comments for a couple of days now, and I've had a few comments where I've told people I was working on developing this technique. And developing might be the wrong word, more like doing testing. I quick, quickly found this as I was working through a new Ubuntu 23.04 test where I was hoping some of the improvements that we saw towards Firefox and other snap packages inside of 23.04 carried over to the container image and where I was hoping some of the improvements we saw in the desktop version with Firefox and other performance of snap containers carried over to the container version and might have helped Nextcloud. Well, it was unclear if that was the case with the initial installation, and I did some more poking because I never really understood why the container installation required or required an extra set of software and necessarily why it performed so much worse. And after I uncovered it, I did do some asking with ChatGPT and the software we were using should have actually improved the performance. So it might have been like a configuration issue, not entirely sure. But with that, let's go off and go over to my desktop and start setting this up. Now we're going to use an LTS version of this because we want long-term support. So let's, um, here at the Proxmox web interface, we recognize this. And I'm already up here. I was looking around earlier to see if 23.04 had come out officially or if we still had to use the LXD image. And we still do have to use the LXD image. But 23.04, to my knowledge, also isn't an LTS release. So I don't really want to use that. So we're going to go back to or actually I don't have it on here, but we're gonna use the 22.04 LT release. So to get that release, we're going to need to click on our local drive where we store it, then select our CT templates and hit templates. At templates, I'm gonna go ahead and search for Ubuntu and we can select the version we want, 22.04, which is an LTS version, as I've stated before. And then we can press download. This will download our image. Our image is now downloaded and we're ready to start creating this container. So the first thing we're gonna do is close this window and you see 22.04 shows up here. Now, we already have our server selected and everything, but it's good practice, I guess, to go back and select the server. And we can go ahead and go up here and click Create CT. Now, if we didn't have our server selected and we were in a cluster environment, we could actually click this drop down and select the node or the server that we want to use. In my case, we only have one here. And I'm going to call this fast. Nextcloud, really the name doesn't matter, but you're going to have to give it a name. Now, we'll give it a password. Unprivileged is fine. Nesting is fine. We're going to hit next. And we're going to select our image, 22.04, as I stated before. We're going to select our disks. And I'm going to give mine, oh, let's give it 100 gigs. I'm going to give it two cores. And I'm going to give it two gigs of memory. Network, I'll let it select DHCP. This might not be the net best practice for a Nextcloud server, and I actually suggest against it, to the point that I think I will actually show you how to do this. So we enter the IP address 192.168.1, and in my case, let's just go 21. Now, this is my IP address. If you're working in a different IP range, you want to work in that IP range. Notice this box is still red. We need to put a CIDR mask for most networks that work from 0 to 255. That's going to be slash 24. We're going to configure our router IP address. And if we need to, also configure our bridge. Now, by default, Proxmox comes with one bridge. I have a little bit of a different setup here as I'm bouncing around between a couple of different locations and the network's a little bit different. So I'm selecting my second bridge here. 
all right, my DNS can be all left alone. And it wants me to look at it and make sure everything's as I like it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit finish here. And this is actually going to create the container from the image. All right, so we can exit that now and you see it right here all created now it's time to go into options and we want to do features and we want to hit edit and we want to turn on this fuss or false however you say it and hit OK. And then, of course, nesting is still on. Now, you're probably, if this is your storage, want to also click here, hit edit, and tell it to start on boot. That's going to start this container up if your system restarts. All right, so now we can hit start and console, and we're going to log in with root and the password that we set up prior. Now we'll set this up and change this here in a second, but the first thing I want to do is run an APT update, and I'm gonna string it together with an APT upgrade. This is a fairly old operating system, even though it is an LTS version, and there'll be a large amount of updates for it. So we wanna get them done in the most expedient manner. Okay, so now that we have all of our updates and everything installed, Installed, we need to start out by creating a new user. And the user that I'm going to create is VE. Now, you can create whatever user you want, but of course, VE works for us. So I'm going to use the add user command and I'm going to enter VE. This will ask me for a password and we can select whatever we want to use. All right. So now we also need to give the user pseudo privileges. So we enter pseudo at the end. Now, if we were to try to do this all in one line, it wouldn't work out for us. So um, just to be noted, we need to make sure that we do it in two separate commands. All right, so now we can start actually installing some of the software we need now we have the user. We will have come back here and um, finish cleaning up with the users, but we'll do that in a minute here. So we're gonna run apt install and we're gonna run snap d and we'll put a nash y. All right, now that we have snap installed, we can run snap install nextcloud and we do have to run this twice. I have a typo here, sorry. So we can run snap install nextcloud and we're going to have to run that twice. It will fail most times on the first install with an app armor error message, just like that. And we'll just hit the up arrow and enter again. <laughs> All right, so we've got the package downloaded and quote unquote installed. We're gonna have to do some configuration now and excuse me, but I'm gonna copy and paste this command. So it's nextcloud.manual-install and then it's username. And again, we'll do VE and it's password. Your password's gonna show in clear text. And I'm just going to use like a generic password that's going to work for me. All right, so it looks like we've created a username and password. So the next thing I like to do is run a command of IP address, which is going to tell me the IP address. Now we set this IP address up with the previous installation or the creation of the container. Now we set this IP address up with the creation of the container and we should know it, but um, we just good to check it, make sure it's good to go. And the next command is going to be nextcloud.occ config colon system config set trusted domain one dash dash value equals, and we're gonna put our IP address in there. Now, if you don't want to use your IP address and you want to use a domain, we can also set that in here. If we had multiple domains, we could change that one to two and so forth. Off. All right, so now that should be set and we should be able to head to a web browser and check that out. Okay, so here's Nextcloud all loaded up in the web browser. 
you notice I just entered the IP address 192.168.321 and we can go ahead and enter our username and the password that we set up in the command line and we can log in. And here's Nextcloud running for the first time, all ready to be used. We can go ahead, I like to go through and delete out all of this content and you can notice it's very nicely responsive. The other thing I want to do here because when we released our turnkey video we had some people that thought that they could comment on it incorrectly and say that it was a different version than it was. So I want to go up here and I'm going to want to go to I think it's about no nope, this is not where I want to be um, so by default this is going to install Nextcloud 3 version 25.06 so now that we've determined what version we have and demonstrated it I want to go ahead and actually lock out the um, root user account so it's just our user and to do that I'm going to go back to Proxmox and I'm going to hit console here and so now that we're here in the console we're going to hit type exit which is going to log us out and we'll log in with the user account so we're no longer under root and then we can type and we have to start actually using sudo so we're going to type sudo passwd-l root and enter our password and this will disable the root account Okay, so we're going to end this video right here with a working Nextcloud installation at version 25, Nextcloud Hub 3. And that's because I want to do the speed testing and everything as a speed testing episode and actually compare it off to the rest of the type of installation. So our standard or our old way of doing a Nextcloud snap install and a Nextcloud turnkey install. And I I want to do that on this network so I want to do it as a full episode because obviously we're now here at the Freedom House we've left the Beach House and the network's going to behave a little bit differently so we are only using an SG-1000 here which struggles to handle full gigabit when I push it hard. We do have some pretty good switching and with my understanding of the way the switches work the router shouldn't be much of an issue. We also have some limitations on Wi-Fi here at the house and it's just due to some old cabling that we have that I've chosen to utilize until I was able to upgrade it. Those upgrades are coming here in the future but I really don't think that any form of a speed test at this exact moment without being turned into a full episode is really fair. So we're going to leave this episode off here and the next episode coming out will be a speed test episode where I show you guys the result of this installation. As always, have a good night and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help this channel continue to grow.